Okay, here we're going to look at predator-prey interactions. And while I did put this image here on the title, I'm not quite sure how accurate it is, but it does get the point that the cat here is the predator and the goldfish is the prey, and they're interacting with their environment. So predation is the consuming of one organism by another, and under simple laboratory conditions, the predator often exterminates its prey. However, this does not typically occur in nature. So if our great blue herons ate all of the sunfish, well, soon there would be no great blue herons because there would be no food to feed off of. While our prey mantis consumed all the flies, there would be no prey mantis. We need this predator-prey interaction to occur. And while they are consuming other organisms, we don't want to consume them to the point of extinction because they then they themselves would become extinct. So what ends up happening is this interaction. In nature, predators and prey populations often exhibit cyclical oscillations. So what does that mean? Well, here we have time here on the x-axis and population on the y. Looking at our um, North American snowshoe hare, and then here we have our Canadian lynx, which feeds on the snowshoe hare. So the snowshoe hare is the prey. We'll notice when the prey increases, which could be for a multitude of reasons, soon after that there's a delay, the predators will also increase. In contrast to that, when the prey decreases, so will the predators. Now, prey can increase for um, two different main reasons. One, food. So the food availability to the prey could increase. In the case, that would be willow trees and, branch, and uh, birch twigs. That can help increase the food supply and help increase the prey. We could also have a change in the predator population, in this case, the Canadian lynx. So here, the population is a little bit lower, the prey will increase. However, this could be reduction in food, or more likely, based on this data, increase in the amount of lynx the predator present. And we can see that delay occurring, and it de decreases. And we see the prey starting to increase, and there's a delay here, and the predators will also increase. And it's this cyclic kind of ice oscillation that's occurring, this up and down motion that's occurring in the various populations of the snowshoe hare and the Canadian lynx. Now, these interactions are essential in the maintenance of species diverse communities. So predators greatly reduce competition exclusion by reducing the individuals from competing species. For example, uh, sea stars prevent bivalves from dominating uh, the intertidal habitats. Other organisms can share this habitat. So there's this term called keystone species, and these are species that play a key role in their communities. So he, you see here at the um, we have a small amount of our sea stars. They're being eaten and consumed here by the otters. That's allowing uh, kelp here to be able to grow, to be able to flourish, uh, and be able to create this kind of habitat. Now in this next situation, we remove our keystone species. Well, for whatever reason now, this population has decreased. As we can see now, there's a lot of sea stars present. That has severely reduced our population of kelp, and that creates a loss of habitat. You can see these kelp beds, how um, extensive they are, like forests below the um, surface of the water, here is very sparse, uh, reducing of habitat for small fish species to be able to survive, and really affecting the entire local ecosystem here. We're removing one species, now the sea stars multiply and they feed on the kelp and reduce its ability uh, to grow and develop into these large kelp forests. So the term keystone species, as a way to remember it, is the keystone, and an archway here is that center stone. So that's where it gets its name. If we take that keystone out, well, the entire arch will fall apart. Here we see an example of a beaver, another example of a keystone species, maybe developing the beaver dams, uh, changing the water flows, raising water levels. That can uh, largely impact uh, an ecosystem and really change if we remove the beavers can really change how this local environment behaves and what's allowed to survive and what will sadly perish.